When Ma Dong Suk dons a yellow duck costume, his fighting spirit not only remains intact but seems to intensify. He was standing up for his younger brother Ju Bong, but take a look at how he was treating Suk Bong. Just a few days ago, their father passed away suddenly while the brothers were still in Seoul. The eldest son, Suk Bong, is a training instructor, his classes are unpopular, and he's not doing well, not even having his own place to live. The second son, Ju Bong, is in a different situation with a car, a house, and a busy job. Upon receiving the news, the brothers had to return to their hometown for the funeral. Their relationship, in fact, has never been good. As they were arguing, it seemed they hit something. Getting out of the car, they discovered it was a person, which terrified them. After calling the police, they were instructed to take the individual to the hospital. It took a Herculean effort to get the woman into the car. Moments later, the woman regained consciousness but remembered nothing, claiming her name was Ro or A. She asked to be let out of the car and then left. The brothers hadn't been home for a long time. The last was when their mother fell ill and passed away. They weren't notified at the time. The brothers resented their father's actions and even got into a fight with their relatives over it. Now, looking at their father's corpse, they didn't shed a single tear. Their family is steeped in tradition, requiring them to wear sackcloth and perform filial mourning rituals. But they couldn't care less, casting it aside. Even going so far as to give them a profound lesson, Sukbang actually returned to search for family assets to sell for money, starting with the house's nameplate, then the father's study from vases to ancient coins, and finally paintings, but he found nothing of value. This left Sukbang disheartened. The younger brother sighed, explaining that over the years, he had paid off many of their father's debts, and because of the lack of money, this was the reason he remained single, and also a main source of the tension between them. Sukbang went out for fresh air but encountered Ro Ra, the woman they'd hit earlier, wandering with an umbrella in the dead of night. It's likely she had some mental confusion. To appease her, he even spent the whole night swinging her on a swing set. The delighted Roare shared a secret with Sukbong, claiming there was a cultural artifact. A pair of golden Buddhas worth 10 billion, hidden right beneath them, Sukbong felt that his chance to change his fate had finally arrived, and it was time for a big move. The following day, Sukbong specifically asked a colleague from Seoul to bring a metal detector to search for something. <laughs> Xu Bang received a call from his boss about a road construction project that was going to pass right by their home. His boss promised that if he could get the villagers to agree to relocate, Xu Bang would be able to live a wealthy life. Meanwhile, Ro or A, the woman Suk Bang had accidentally hit with his car, showed up insisting on swinging on the swings as if nothing had happened. Xu Bang thought she must have been mentally affected by the accident. After placating the woman, he immersed himself in studying the family genealogy until he knew it by heart. Then, dressed in funeral attire, he sweet-talked the elders of the clan and eventually gained their trust and got them to sign the agreement. Both brothers were busily pursuing their own agendas, paying no mind to their father's funeral preparations. Sukbang finally dug up a jar, but to his disappointment, it contained only the toys of his childhood. Yet, he didn't give up and soon discovered something golden beneath the door, expecting it to be a golden Buddha and a sign of impending wealth. He was surprised to find an old mobile phone instead. Picking up the phone, he remembered how his mother had worked tirelessly for the sake of the family, only to be scolded for not preparing the offerings well. Out of compassion, he had bought her a phone. Xu Bong placed the development agreement in the cabinet. Upon discovering this, Suk Bong immediately discussed with his friend that they must find the Golden Buddha before the development began. Unfortunately, his brother overheard and recorded the conversation, leading to a confrontation that resulted in the brothers irreparably falling out. As the eldest, Suk Bong had always been the center of attention, leaving his brother feeling neglected and aggrieved. However, Suk Bong felt even more wronged, not wanting to inherit the family legacy and remain in the small rural village. The argument escalated into a physical fight. In the midst of their brawl, Ro Ore appeared out of nowhere but was quickly tripped up by something and fell to the ground. Seemingly lifeless, Suk Bong checked and found no pulse, so they covered her with a straw mat. Coincidentally, a thief had broken into the house, and when the police arrived to investigate, they found the straw mat. 
the brothers were extremely nervous, but when the mat was lifted, there was nothing underneath. It turned out that the woman had regained consciousness. Just as they were about to bring her inside, they were stopped. An old man asked why they were speaking to thin air. Suk Bong even suggested to the woman that the old man might be suffering from dementia. But as she walked through the crowd, the brother noticed she cast no shadow. It turned out she had never been human, and only they could see her. The female ghost let out a fierce scream, causing a sudden gust of wind and all the lights went out. Then, just as quickly, she disappeared. Suk Bong couldn't even wait for his father's burial. The next day, he took down the family's valuable plaques and some of his father's possessions and fled. This infuriated the family patriarch, who had to take heart-saving pills. The brother sent off the development agreement, but on the road, Sukban kept seeing the ghostly apparition of Ro R A, which frightened him so much he crashed into the roadside. One moment she was in the car, the next beside it, all in broad daylight. When his brother found him, they were both so scared they had wet themselves. Their attempt to escape had failed miserably. After Sukban read his father's diary, he discovered that his father had actually been adopted by the family. His mother had developed Alzheimer's disease and his father wanted to take her for treatment. However, his mother felt that leaving the family for a cure that was uncertain would damage her husband's reputation, so she refused medical treatment and asked him not to tell the children. She buried what she considered important underground and gradually forgot everything, regressing to a childlike state. She even forgot her husband and herself until her death. The clan wanted the father to quickly pass on the position of family head to the eldest grandson. Knowing his sons did not want to stay at home, he left a phone number for them. But in reality, it was their mother's mobile phone. This explained why they were not informed about their mother's funeral and had misunderstood their father for many years. The younger brother also realized that the ghost Roare was the spitting image of their mother when she was younger. Due to being away for many years, they had forgotten what their mother looked like. Both brothers remembered that once the development agreement was implemented, their mother's beloved swing set would be gone. So, they immediately drove back to the city and went to the company to take back the development agreement. For this, the younger brother was severely humiliated by the leadership. Sukban, seeing this, took the opportunity to give him a stern lesson. The brothers finally reconciled their relationship and joined together in a battle to reclaim the agreement. However, they were ultimately unable to retrieve it. They rushed back to their father's funeral and placed a photo. When their mother's ghost saw the photo at the graveside, she remembered who she was, recalling the happy times with her husband and family when they were young. She then peacefully joined her husband. In the end, the brothers discovered that their father had planted his favorite orchid for their mother, a species that was believed to be extinct and highly valued by the state. As a result, the land was preserved. The story behind the film questions feudal ethics and highlights that the love of parents is always great. It's just that we often fail to recognize it. Until next time.